Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 16th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Sunny skies, nice, pleasant, cool morning. I uh, actually sat out on the back uh, patio this morning and had a cigar and a coffee for the first time this this uh, spring season. Uh, it's just been too cold in the morning to do that. So this morning was just absolutely perfect. Really enjoyed that. Uh, right now I have uh, my new Phil Rivara uh, little pot. Beautiful pipe that Phil made. And I am smoking some Haunted Bookshop because I am predictable. <laughs> That's okay. Ah, uh, and I got a couple things I want to talk about today. I I want to I want to start off by telling you about something that happened while I was having that cigar. It's a bit of a story, but I think you'll enjoy it. So I was um, sitting there with a cigar and looking out across the yard, and there was uh, we we have a suet feeder. <clears throat> And I watched this cardinal fly up to the suet feeder and find it empty because I had neglected to, to, to fill it the past couple of days. There was some suet left about, oh, I don't know, maybe Wednesday, and then it was gone. So so it was my fault. Basically, it was my fault. It wasn't the cardinal's fault. It was empty. Anyway, so I, I go, uh, I think to myself, okay, I should probably fill that. And then I was watching some videos as I smoked the cigar. And I was watching some of uh, Hobbiton Piper's videos and his video on his his Savinelli pipe uh, about uh, has a pipe ever spoken to you. And I, I think it's an excellent video. If you don't uh, know Hobbiton Piper, uh, I just discovered him yesterday. Uh, actually, I've got uh, Chris the Rambling Dilettante to thanks for, for the introduction there. But I highly recommend you go check out Hoppatin Piper. He's he's only got a handful of videos, five or six videos, so he's just getting started. Really good presenter. Uh, if if you like these kinds of chats, you're you're gonna love his uh, his stuff. So I'm watching his videos, and he's got these bird feeders, and you hear the birds in the background, and and he was talking about the birds, and then I watched one of his other videos, and at the end he had a clip. Uh, Few minutes or so of Orioles feeding on one of his bird feeders and I said you know I gotta do something about this bird feeder situation because you know <laughs> I don't want to be one up by Hopperton Piper in the bird feeder world so by the way I don't remember if I said it but there will be a link below to Hopperton Piper's uh, channel so go check him out give him a sub uh, let's make him feel welcome so I'm sitting there uh, looking at the bird feeder, and I said, okay, I, I know I've got some suet in the garage, so that's an easy fix. Oh, by the way, I forgot to bring my Zippo. It's upstairs, and this is lighting about 30% of the time, so I'm hoping it gets me through. If not, I've got some matches. So... I, I know I've got some suet in the garage, and I said, you know, I'm fairly certain there's a feeder that I just didn't put up last year uh, that I that I can get out, and I think I've got a big plastic uh, container of bird seed, so let me get that up too. You know, this this will be great to make the birds happy. So I go out in the garage, and uh, I don't know if we've ever talked about my garage. Um, my garage is where my wife's purchases go to die. I'm just going to leave it at that. You, you, you guys know what I mean by that, I'm sure. But I've got the entire basement. This is my domain. She can drop her purchases off in the garage. That's okay. Uh, we gave up parking a car in the garage a long, long time ago. So I got to go out to the garage and look for this stuff. And it involves climbing over things and you know reaching in ways you're not supposed to reach and moving stuff and you know, I found it and I was very happy and I, I go out and so first thing I do is I you know get the suet feeder down and I put it takes a brick of suet on either side so that'll make the birds happy and then I go and I get the the, the feeder out and I take the top off and I look at it and I realized 
I don't know the proper term for this. I'm not I'm not much of a bird feeder guy other than I like having them. Uh, I think it might be called a thistle feeder uh, or something like that. It's got a relatively fine square mesh in the center, and that's where you pour these uh, rel relatively fine seeds that the birds can then pull out of, through that mesh. Um, I don't remember ever having seeds for this, so I have no idea why we bought it. Um, anyway, I have a collection of like sunflower seeds and peanuts and corn, and obviously this is not going to work in this thistle feeder. So I got to uh, think about that for a while, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know, all I wanted to do was hang up a bird feeder. This this isn't easy. This, this is. This should be easier than all this. And it, it, it triggered a thought that I haven't had in quite a few years. And now I got to go back to my graduate school days to, to finish this story. So when I was in graduate school, um, you know, you get, you're on a, um, well, at least in, at the time, if you were in the sciences, you were um, sort of employed by the university. You were given a stipend, which was barely enough to pay rent and buy food. And so you didn't have to work, so you could spend all your time working on your, your research. So that was fantastic. And to compensate the university for that, you were required to uh, be a teaching assistant for a couple of classes. So I was a teaching assistant the first year that I was there for a um, biology 101, you know, one of these massive lecture hall classes where there's you know, probably you know, one to 200 students and they're learning about mitosis and photosynthesis and, you know, basic, basic biology. So my job was to sit in the class, take notes, and then I would have multiple breakout sessions during the week. I forget what we call them, recitations, I think, where like a quarter, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of that class would, would come. They didn't, they weren't required to come to it. I would review what was taught that week and they could ask questions, uh, which is just a better way. You know, some people are kind of uncomfortable asking a question in that large lecture hall setting. And also it allowed me to dig deeper into things than the professor had the time to, to do. So I, I did this for my, my first year there, two terms, uh, biology, I think it was 100 and 101. I think those are the two classes. So during one of these classes, I think it was the second one, it was team taught. And one of the teachers um, was this wonderful professor and i'm not going to use his full name because i i don't know you know if he's still teaching or whatever and i don't want to anyway i'm going to call him professor mel uh professor mel was a, this wonderful man who his his research and his passion was around birds and bird navigation and he was really very very interested in these basic biological questions like you know how does a bird know to fly north. I mean, how does it know it's going north? You know, is it is it because of the sun and the stars and all that, or is it something else? Is there some ability to sense magnetic field? You know, those kind of things. And he, he was just really into this stuff. And I loved talking to him. You know, he he was a, a, a fountain of knowledge. Uh, he could talk about any area of, bi area of biology, and he was interested in it. So you know, you got to really learn something when you talked to Professor Mel. So I was working in the lab. Um, it was late. The kind of work I was doing required me to take photographs on a 35 millimeter camera and actually develop them in a dark room. And the dark room was in the basement. And it was late. You know, it was probably 11 o'clock at night, something like that. And I'm down there in the dark room developing film, kind of creepy. A little spooky. 
and I finished and I hung it up to dry and cleaned up and everything and I'm I want to go home now I'm tired so I I go and I you know open the outer door and almost run into Professor Mel who's walking down the hallway and I saw oh, hello and he said hey how you doing because he knew me from being his teaching assistant and immediately you know how's the research going that kind of stuff and we start talking about my research and I was having a problem at the time I don't remember what the problem was but there was something not working the way I had hoped and we talked about this uh, you know I described the problem to him he gave me some thoughts that he had although he wasn't an expert in the area and he admitted that and I you know responded to those thoughts or whatever and he just said well good luck and I remember I shook my head and I said yep it's not easy and I can still see him walking down the hallway this dimly lit basement corridor I can see his silhouette as he's receding into the distance and I can hear his voice echoing down this hallway as he shouted out it's not supposed to be and he walked away and that moment came flooding back to me today when I sat down there after my complete failure to feed the birds <laughs> and said, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be. There are things that are easy, you know, and, and they're good, you know, and they make us happy when, you know, when, gee, that worked. But most of life is really messy and complicated and difficult, and that's just true. You know that's just part of existing in this in this physical universe it's not it's not a matter of luck or, or karma or faith or anything else it's just a complex world that we live in and it's not easy especially if you're trying to figure it out And it's not just when you're trying to do something, it's just trying to get through life without suffering. There is suffering, you know, there is. It's a part of being human, and it's hard. And there's no magic solution to it. You know, there's no magic. You can't make it go away. It's there, it's going to happen to you. If it hasn't already, it will. It's not easy. Now, I know that's not the cheeriest uh, sort of topic for it for a weekend chat but i think there is something positive about this if you're always struggling against the it should be easy concept you're causing yourself more suffering than need be sometimes and this doesn't apply to my bird feeder problem, but sometimes you need to embrace the difficulty. Sometimes you need to say, man, this is really hard, but that's not going to stop me. You know, I'm going to do this. Um, I wish it was easy. I would love that, but it's not, and that's not going to stop me. Uh, what about... Loving someone that uh, is, I, I don't want to really bring up anything specific here, but, you know, is, is doing something that hurts you, maybe doing it to themselves, maybe doing it to those around them. It, it can be very difficult to love someone like that. Very, very difficult. It's not easy. And then you can walk away from them. And, you know, in some situations, that might be the right thing to do. But let's say it's a child. Excuse me while I get another candle. I need my pokey thing. Let's say it's a child, and uh, you're the parent. And, you know, you can't walk away from a child. And I mean, uh, you know, growed up child. <laughs> You got to keep loving them, and it's not easy. 
but you don't fall into despair. You, you say to yourself, this is important. This is something I need. This is something they need. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it come hell or high water. You excuse the expression. Second time I used that expression in the past couple of days. So, yeah. Didn't think I'd go from bird feeders to child rearing, but there you have it. And I, of course, am qualified to speak on neither of those topics, so take it all with a grain of salt. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful Sunday here. You can hear the lawnmowers going outside. Uh, I'm going to be doing some gardening today, and I know my wife has some job she wants me to take care of, so that's going to pretty much be my Sunday. Hope I get some time to relax later and enjoy another pipe. But I'm going to finish this guy with some coffee and move on with my Sunday. So I hope you all are having a beautiful Sunday as well and looking forward to the week ahead. And until we talk again, I will look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. <laughs>